Insights channel, Steve here, and today I'm going to read some more from my new book, Secrets of Enoch, Insights, and this is taken from the second part of chapter 31, and continuing from the last video, or audio I should say, that I made. So this is from comment 23, Noah was a just man, perfect, perfect of course was not meaning sinless, Romans 3.23, in his generations, Noah walked with God. Genesis 6, 9 and 12. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. All flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. Comment 24. The book of Joshua is mentioned in the Bible in Joshua 10.13 and 2 Samuel 1.18, leading credence as the authenticity of this book. Yes, that's a very good book to know, I must say. The book of Joshua, get my book, Joshua Insights. Incredible stories. It really brings out the Old Testament and makes it very dramatic indeed. Comment 25. The transhumanist movement and all of its contributing occult science as this does concern all of us. Yeah, that is unfortunately what's going on in the world today, as was mentioned at the end of the last video I made, by, by changing species and messing around with DNA of animals and people. God help us all. That's the way the world's going again. Book of Jubilees, one, five, and 10. Here's another incredible book, the Hebrew book of Jubilees, get my book, Jubilees Insights. Look at this. And it came to pass when the children of men began to multiply in the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the angels of God saw them on a certain year of this jubilee, that they were beautiful to look upon. And he took themselves wise of all whom they chose, and they bare unto them sons, and they were giants. I would put to you, Notice how it says it bear unto them sons. It doesn't say daughters. Now that's a very interesting point. I won't get into that now, but there's a reason why that was the case. Anyway, they bear unto them sons and they were giants. You don't really hear about female giants, do you? Not really. In the stories of old and mythology, do you? No, you don't. So where, what happened there? What went wrong there? Why was there no female giants? That's a good question. And lawlessness increased on the earth, and all flesh corrupted its way, like men and cattle and beasts and bird and everything that walks on the earth. All of them corrupted their ways and their orders, and they began to devour each other. And lawlessness increased on the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of all men was evil continually. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, wow, it was corrupt and all flesh had corrupted its orders, and all that were upon the earth had wrought all manner of evil before his eyes. And he said, You destroy man and all flesh upon the face of the earth, which he had created. But Noah found grace before the eyes of the Lord. Wow. And against the angels whom he had sent upon the earth, he was exceedingly wroth, and he gave commandment to root them out of all their dominion. And he bade us to bind them in the depths of the earth, and behold, they are bound in the midst of them, and are kept separate. And against their sons went forth a command, from before his face they should be smitten with a sword. And he removed from under heaven, and he said, of course I was talking about the giants, My spirit shall not always abide on man, for they also are flesh. Their days shall be one hundred and twenty years. And he sent his sword into the midst of each, we should slay his neighbour. Yeah, the 120 year mark happened sometime later after the flood, like in the in the time of Jacob's sons, his 12 sons, they all lived from anywhere from Joseph 110 to Levi 138. So around the, and some of the 120, so around the 120 mark happened about 500 years after the flood. It started about 600 years after the flood, in the case of people like Shem, Noah, 
still lived to be 950 or 350 years after the flood he died. And then the numbers kept going down until they reached 120, about 500 years after the flood, the time of the sons of Jacob. And eventually it went down even further down to only 70. So another 500 years later, or 3,000 years ago, in the days of King David, as he stated in the Psalms, and a man's years shall be threescore and ten. That's 70 years. If by reason, goodness, I'm already 72. Um, <laughs> but if by reason of great strength, they're fourscore, 80, then is it toil, labor, pain, sorrow. That's what the scripture says. And then he is given wings and flies away towards heaven. Well, thank God for that. So the age of man has been taken down around about 80. I think it's now about average 78, something like that. But imagine at one time man used to live to be 900. 900. I know a lot of people say, yeah, I don't want to live here 900 years. <laughs> well, not in this present state. And when your body deteriorates so quickly, I know it's something else. <laughs> well, so anyway, it was. Um, and he said, my spirit shall not always abide on man. For they also are flesh, and their day shall be a hundred and twenty years. And he sent his sword into their midst, that each should slay his neighbour. And he began to slay each other, till they all fell by the sword. Let's talk about the giants here. And were destroyed from the earth, and their fathers were witnesses of their destruction. So the fallen angels saw the destruction of their sons of giants. And after this they were bound in the depths of the earth forever, till the day of the great condemnation, when judgment is executed on all those who have corrupted their ways and their works before the Lord. Comment 26. See first Enoch, when the world was changed. Enoch 8.1. In Genesis chapter 6, the Bible tells us that during the time of Noah, the giants came into existence because of fallen angels who cohabited with the daughters of men. And today... This is now a much more widely understood and accepted subject than in the past. Below is where we find the account of these happenings in the book of Genesis. Genesis 6, 2-5 And it came to pass, when men began to be numerous upon the earth, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God, having seen the daughters of men that they were beautiful, took to themselves wives of all whom they chose. And the Lord God said, my spirit shall certainly not remain among these men forever, because they are flesh, but their days should be a hundred and twenty years. Now the giants were upon the earth in those days. And after that, when the sons of God were wont to go to the daughters of men, they bore children to them. Those were the giants of old, the men of renown. There is a fuller account of this event described in the book of Enoch, even naming the names of many of the fallen angels. And it came to pass, when the sons of men had increased, in those days there were born to them fair and beautiful daughters. And the angels, the sons of heaven, saw them, desired them. And they said one to another, Come, let us choose ourselves wives from the children of men. Let us beget for ourselves children. And Semyaza, who was their leader, said to them, I fear that you may not wish this deed to be done. I alone will pay for this great sin. And they all answered and said, let us all swear an oath, bind one another with curses, so not to alter this plan, but to carry out this plan effectively. And then they all swore together, all bound one another with curses to it. And they were in all two hundred. And they came down on Ardis, which is the mount, summit of Mount Hermon. And they called the mountain Hermon, because on it they swore and bound one another with curses. See, First Enoch also, 6, 1 through 6. In 1869, Charles Warren made an interesting discovery on the top of Mount Hermon. There is a sacred building made of hewn blocks of stone on the summit of Mount Hermon, known as Khazar Antar. It is the highest temple of the ancient world, sitting 2,800 feet above sea level. It was documented by Sir Charles Warren in 1869. He described the temple as being a rectangular building, sitting on an oval stone plateau without roof. 
he removed a limestone steel from the northwest of the oval, broke it into two pieces and carried it down the mountain back to the British Museum, where it currently resides. An inscription on the steel was translated by George Nicholsborough to read, according to the command of the greatest and holy God, those who take an oath proceed from here. Nicholsburg connected the inscription with an oath taken by the angels under Semyaza, who took an oath together bound by a curse in order to take wives. Oh, that's amazing. Amazing discovery there. Book of Enoch, 1st Enoch 6 6. Hermon was said to have become known as the Mount of Oath by Charles Simon Clement Gano. The name of God was supposed to be a Hellenized version, I say a Greek version of Baal or Hadad, and Nicholsburg co connected it with the place name of Baal Hermon, Lord of Hermon, and the deity given by Enoch as the Great Holy One. Well, Eusebius recognized the religious importance of Hermon in his work Omni Masticon, saying, Until today, the mountain in front of Panias and Lebanon is known as Hermon respected by nations of sanctuary. It has been pretty much established that the fallen angels are watchers, as they also know. Entered our world from the spiritual realm, another dimension on the summit of Mount Hermon. It could be said that at the su summit of Mount Hermon, there was or is a portal, a stargate to another world. I would agree with that. Comment 27. Nimrod was aware of this type of phenomenon. When he commissioned the building of the Tower of Babel, which was reached into heaven. This also is what projects like CERN, this kind of project like CERN today, what they're trying to achieve. Yeah, get into other dimensions. They want to open a portal to another dimension, they say so themselves, besides producing giants, which are often referred to as Nephthalim. There were other unpleasant consequences that took place on earth because of the fallen watchers. One particular watcher named Azazel really did some major damage and Azazel taught men to make swords and daggers and shields and breastplates and he showed them the things after these and the art of making them bracelets and ornaments, art of making up the eyes, of beautifying the eyelids and the most precious stones, all kinds of colored dyes. And the world was changed. See then what Azael has done, how he's taught all iniquity on the earth, revealed the eternal secrets that are made in heaven, and the whole earth has been ruined by the teachings of the works of Azazel, and against him write all sin. And that's Enoch 8, 1, 9, 6, 10, 8. Comment 8, 28. Azazel, the scapegoat. An interesting side note is as Azazel is the name of the scapegoat in the Torah, ancient Jewish book, which was used to take away the sins of the nation of Israel. The scapegoat was a goat that was designed, it's got the Hebrew here, written in Hebrew, for the absolute removal, or possibly for Azazel, some modern versions taking the term as a name, an outcast in the desert, as part of the ceremonies of the Day of Atonement that began during the Exodus with the original tabernacle, and it continues through the times of the temples in Jerusalem. Comment 29. Atonement. Throughout the year, the sins of the ancient Israelites were daily transferred to the regular sin offerings, as outlined in the Torah in Leviticus, chapter 16. Once a year, on the tenth day of the seventh month in the Jewish calendar, the Day of the Atonement, the high priest of Israel sacrificed a bull for a sin offering for his own sins, and subsequently took two goats and presented them at the door of the tabernacle with a view to dealing with the corporate sins of God's people, the nation of Israel. Two goats were chosen by Lot, one to be the Lord's goat, which was offered as a blood sacrifice, and the other to be the Azazel, scapegoat, to be sent away into the wilderness. The blood of the slain goat was taken into the Holy of Holies behind a sacred veil and sprinkled on the mercy seat, the lid of the Ark Covenant. Later, in the ceremonies of the day, the high priest confessed the sins of the Israelites to Yahweh, placing them figuratively on the head of the other goats. The Azazel scapegoat, who took them away, never to be seen again. 
The sin of the nation was thus atoned for, paid for by the Lord's goat and the Azazel goat. Comment 30. Going back to the point that it would seem that the summit of Mount Hermon was a portal to another world, we'd like to speculate on the possibility of a verse out of Revelation. Revelation 12.9 and a great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. It was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And the question that we wanted to ask about was, where would the devil be cast out into the earth? What geological location? He's not omnipotent, so he has to be in a single place. Could it be the summit of Mount Hermon? As there has already been a precedent on that mountain being the location of a doorway of the fallen angels to watch us. Comment 30. Mount Hermon is 33 degrees latitude and 30 degrees, 33 degrees longitude. Another interesting observation are the ruins of an ancient temple on the summit of Mount Hermon. In 1666, Louis XIV of France authorized the building of an observatory in Paris to measure longitude. And this was the beginning of the Paris Zero Meridian. Believe it or not, According to the Paris Zero Meridian, Mount Hermon and the ancient territory of Dan is located at 33 degrees east of the Paris Zero Meridian longitude and 33 degrees north of the equator latitude. The 33rd degree became an important part of Freemasonry, probably due to a history that dates back to the Knights Templar, the French Merovingian dynasty and their family ties to the Danites. Comment 31. What does the ancient tribe of Dan have to do with any of this? The tribe of Dan bordered Mount Hermon and, according to Judges 17, were completely given over to idolatry and the worship of Baal. In Genesis chapter 49, Jacob prophesied over all his sons and their role in the last days. Genesis 49, 1, 17. And Jacob called his sons and said to them, Assemble yourselves and I may tell you what shall happen to you in the last days. And let Dan be a serpent in the way, besetting the path, biting the heel of the horse, and the rider shall fall backwards. Comment 32. The Antichrist shall come out of Israel. There are many Bible prophecy teachers who have speculated the Antichrist will come out of Israel, specifically the tribe of Dan. Even Winston Churchill made this observation. In an article written by Winston Churchill and published in the Sunday Herald newspaper, February 8, 1920, titled, a struggle for the soul of the Jewish people. And Churchill said the following, it may well be that this same astounding people may at the present moment be in the actual process of producing another system of morals and philosophy as malevolent as Christianity was bene... bene... I can't even say the word. Benevolent, okay. <laughs> Which if not arrested or stopped would shatter irretrievably all that Christianity has rendered possible. It would almost seem as if the gospel of Christ and the gospel of Antichrist were destined to originate among the same people, and that this mystic and mysterious people had been chosen for the supreme manifestations, both the divine and the diabolical. I would agree with that. Good observation by Winston Churchill, Sir Winston Churchill. Comment 34. Panias and the bottomless pit, Revelation 9, 1 and 2 and 11. And the fifth angel sounded, a sort of star, fall from heaven into the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there rose a smoke out of the bottomless pit, and the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Well, it goes on, there's more to it, of this 31st chapter, but I will stop there. But I will encourage people, please do get this is my latest book, Secrets of Enoch Insights, and I would suggest if you don't have it, also get Enoch Insights, my first insights book. This one's the ninth insights book. So all my books are Enoch Insights, Jasha Insights, book one and two, Jubilees Insights, Eden Insights, based on the lost books I had in Testament of Twelve Patriarchs Insights, and Esther's Insights. And then I have two books on the paranormal, supernatural, called Out the Bottom Spit 1 and 2. And now I encourage people also go on our new website 
which is www.insightspublication.com. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.